sound logos and all of uh, sonic branding activities will differentiate more and more mm -hmm. and will become more and more complicated. And that's why uh, the implementation will be even more complex than it is now sure. and will yeah and will make new solutions to that um, yeah uh, necessary. Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. I'm your host, Jody Krangle, and this podcast will discuss just how sound influences our behavior. I generally talk about this in the context of advertising and marketing, but there are other places this is important too. I really feel that it plays a much more important role in our lives than maybe we realize. So let's delve a little deeper. This is the second part of my interview with Dr. Cornelius Renge and Lars Ohlendorf. How can someone who is working on a budget and maybe doesn't have the money to hire a company like your own to develop something, what what are the really simple things that you think they could do to create an audio brand themselves? Is there anything that they could do like using sound effects or um, particular music in front of a podcast or, you know, anything on videos they put on YouTube or whatever? Uh, like I would, mm -hmm. I would say you first start with thinking. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't cost you anything, mm -hmm. and then you write down what you think. So you write a concept. Once you have a concept, and you're conscious about what you do, yeah, mm -hmm. I think you already did a great step. It's a great leap, yeah. and and then you can. I, th I believe that it's possible to have a great concept that doesn't cost you anything, maybe even saves, helps you saving money yeah? mm -hmm. and is something that people will recognize as something, oh, that's typical for this kind of person. Mm -hmm. yeah? I know a mm -hmm. person who has always wearing the same um, colors. <laughs> so I don't know if this is a very expensive strategy. <laughs> yeah, because you you have to wear you have to buy clothes. Yes. Yeah? So they will have a color. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of your of your decision. Oh, I maybe I have some kind of strategy in how I buy things I have to buy anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah? And therefore you have a very typical um appearance. Let's say, oh, I know this person looks like you. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah I, I would agree. Um Thinking is, is a good starter. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, um, and uh, from there, um, I mean, if you, if you have the concept and this should be possible, mm -hmm. uh, a possible task. And uh, from there, it's, um, yeah, well, it's, it's not uh, a far step for, for a designer uh, mm -hmm. uh, to, to overtake from there. And um, yeah, and then I would say, the most important thing then is to see what happens and uh, to not directly um, uh, take everything back if it's not if if it not turns out uh, like you want mm -hmm. just wait a little see how this thing evolves and give it a little time mm -hmm. try to learn along the way and then um, adapt so Okay. Yeah, it's quite classic, right? Yeah, it's, it's totally. Yeah, it's As marketing one hundred and one. Yeah, yeah, it is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. just add yeah. sound. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, and there's another thing. If I think big companies have huge projects, uh, complex uh, uh, structures in the processes, and everything takes needs a long time. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So to get all the approvals, to have all the stakeholder um, buy-in, have all these different meanings in the teams, in the departments, at the end, everything is perfect. Everybody agrees this is the perfect thing. And then you have to present it to the CEO or to the board. Mm -hmm. And then you start from, from the beginning again because they don't accept this. And so yeah. this is what makes yeah. the branding so expensive. 
I see. So, yeah. so you could say the big companies need more money because they are just more complex and complicated. Mm -hmm. If you're an influencer, a smart and creative influencer, you're one person, you make the right decisions and you have a very creative idea and you just do it. Yeah, and you know your brand, so mm -hmm. it's yeah. easy. It's all in one person, yeah. so why yeah. should it cost money? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. a good point. <laughs> yeah, definitely. How, where do you guys see this going in the future? I mean, we are just, like as you were saying, we are basically just now understanding the the power of a conscious audio branding strategy. So mm -hmm. where is it going? What do you see it accomplishing in the future? Um, there's probably a lot. <laughs> there, there, yeah, there, there's a lot. I, I would say, um, as we can see now, uh, the the whole podcasting thing since we have uh, Corona, Corona mm. as a catalyst for podcasting and podcasting as catalyst for audio branding, mm -hmm. um, we see, um, yeah, that we that we now need sound branding for yeah podcasting reasons in a mm -hmm. way uh not for the uh like before like for tv commercials radio commercials uh, there was clear like we have a sound logo and the sound logo should say okay we are brand pop 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 mm -hmm. and and uh we believe in this and that and we are like this um so the basic messaging of, of a sound logo. And with a podcast, we have a quite different application because, um, yeah, it's not like uh, in TV or radio uh, where you uh, more or less involuntarily listen to it. Mm -hmm. It's like you choose to listen to it. A podcast, you, you don't happen to listen to a podcast. You, you, you choose to. And, uh, therefore, and you know that you're listening to yeah. that specific podcast. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the function uh, of the sound logo in the beginning is more like saying, hello, here's your favorite brand again. Yeah. And not like, yeah. <laughs> you remember me? Remember me? It's, yeah, it's yeah. this greeting function. Mm -hmm. And and that's, that's an interesting point because um, we have, yeah, a different... A set of um, what's this Anforderung? Uh, I'm looking for the um, English word. Um, uh, um, um, requirements. Requirement. Requirements. Yes, it's okay. a different set of requirements. Sorry, yes, I interrupted okay. you. No, it's fine. Uh, uh, yeah? I, I was just um, thinking of one of the things that has become of this whole pandemic and all of us being at home and mm -hmm. using um, uh, media on demand. Yeah. Is is the Netflix logo has become so synonymous. Right. <laughs> like, you know, that boom, right? Like right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that just comes immediately to mind <laughs> because yeah. we're all at Indeed. home and we're all yeah. watching TV. Yeah. The, <laughs> but the sound Netflix of, is of like you falling into the sofa. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <But -oh>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it actually makes total sense if you think about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't it, think it, of it that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, for me, it, it really triggers strong emotions. It triggers mm -hmm. the emotion or, or the expectation of great entertainment. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. now, um, now I get something I really deserve. I was working hard, and now I can relax and I can watch exactly what. I want to see and not something somebody else wants 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 me to see. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a very, very positive connotation. Yeah. It's a so very new connotation though, if you think about yeah. it. Right? Yeah, I mean it Well, having... it's the same with the with the cinemas. If you watch a cinema, oh, yeah. you have yes. the the intros. Yeah? Yes. And yeah. it's the same situation because you choose to go into that cinema mm -hmm. and now you're writing, you have some commercials, commercials, and now okay. Now you have the universal pictures. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes. And yeah, but this and is every... a nice melody, and with Netflix is yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Different, okay, definitely but that's also, a sonic that's... logo, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, but this is something. Uh, uh, this would be a nice topic for a uh, design discussion. Indeed, to yes. talk about zeitgeist, yeah, you know? mm -hmm. and saying, okay, uh, why don't we use jingles anymore? Mm. And now we have these super short logos, and you can. Yeah, it's much for for our times now. It's much cooler to have this the dumb logo instead of 
having something like Julius Caesar is coming, entering, yeah. and, da -da -da -da, and the signals, you know? Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. this is what I'm trying to sell every day, a jingle, a proper sung jingle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. But, yes, but we, were try we, we, were, we were talking about the future. Yeah, it, sorry. Uh, uh, before. So mm -hmm. uh, let, let me shortly come back to this. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> so um, now we have these different requirements. Now we have the right mm -hmm. word. Uh, for a sound logo it's and uh and when we look closely it it always has been like this uh companies were were always asking okay so we have this sound logo and it works perfectly with our uh commercial xyz but it doesn't work so well with our radio uh commercials mm. what can we do and uh this is yeah has been a problem and uh with podcasting now this uh, comes more and more um urging and uh, i think this is where we uh, are headed uh, in, in in the future um that sound logos and all of uh, sonic branding activities will differentiate more and more mm -hmm. and will become more and more complicated and that's why uh, the implementation will be even more complex than it is now sure. and will yeah and will make new solutions to that um yeah uh, necessary mm -hmm. and this will be obviously i mean we live in digital times this will be obviously software so we talking about um like file management systems and even uh, K uh, artificial intelligence systems that help you organize your brand sound. So it's not like designing the brand sound. This mm -hmm. will always be, and I absolutely believe in this, uh, work of a great design team. Mm -hmm. But the proper implementation of it and uh, the, the management, the, the management of it, yes. This is something where we can really benefit from, uh, yeah, great software system, um, uh, file management systems, and artificial intelligence. Yeah, and this I was, will happen. I was actually going to ask you about that because I know that in 2019, one of the winners mm -hmm. of your ISA was a dynamic music system that would change yeah. its tempo and speed and the way that the music came across yeah. while you were running. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I can't remember what the company's name was now, but um, but I know mm -hmm. that me neither. Yeah, it. We, we, but it was it was such that. It kind of reminded me of what you were just talking about because that implementation could be dynamic. Indeed. So it could change based on where you're hearing it. Yes, and this will be even the step afterwards mm -hmm. that you uh, have like, yeah, a generative uh, content uh, where even uh, the, vo uh, the voice application is mm -hmm. generative. I mean, yes. it's, it's not such a far stretch from here. It's, yeah, yeah we can already do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh yeah, I just find it fascinating. So there's so yes. much that can change and so much that uh, the implementation has definite um, uh, usages depending on what media you're using it in. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and there's so much more stuff that's on demand now. So yeah. dynamic stuff is right. hugely useful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And we will talk about design as a function. Mm-hmm. And not as something you you have as as a single file and put it somewhere. It's yeah, it's a living like, thing. Yeah, a living thing, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's wonderful. I think about this um, quote of um, David um, Ogilvy mm -hmm. saying like, this is maybe the, if you know the um, man, in, uh, not man in black, uh, madman. Yes. <laughs> this um, crazy... Um, I think she knows it. <laughs> the TV yeah. show, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, if you if you think about this this time in the fifties and the sixties, mm -hmm. this is the time um, where if you watch commercials from this time, it really tells a lot about society mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah, the role, the gender role, for example, and things like that. And you have this um, David Ogilvy. And he was saying, if you have nothing to say, 
sing it. <laughs> yeah. So That's interesting. <laughs> at that time, this tells us quite a lot about their approach of music. Yeah. It was something, oh, we have nothing to say. We have no meaning. There's nothing. There's Let's really, make a jingle. <laughs> let's make a jingle. Exactly. Yeah. And the jingle again also had nothing. It was no there was no message, no meaning. Yeah. It was just yeah. a jingle, it was a nice jingle. And well, okay, they had some lyrics and was rhyming, so well, so mm-hmm. but there was no meaning behind. Yes. And today we would say if you have nothing to say, just shut up because we have enough noise here. Yeah. Yes. And let's design something. If you have to to spread noise, if you are saying something or play music you have sound then let's think about to make the sound better to Mm -hmm. make the sound aligned to your brand and i think that's the big difference from that time having these jingles Mm -hmm. and today saying okay how can we put the maximum of meaning of sense into the things we do so our approach for design is we want to make the things better we want Mm -hmm. to make the brand sound better and we want that this is also, um, yes, giving some some information about the brand. And yeah. that's, that's the thing. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Are you looking for ways to improve your company's or podcast's impact? You'd be surprised how powerful the use of an intentional audio branding strategy can be. Want to know more? I have a free downloadable PDF that gives you my five tips for implementing an intentional audio strategy at voiceoversandvocals.com slash audio dash branding dash strategy. That location does ask to put you on a mailing list just to send you updates on when the new podcasts come out. But if you really don't want to give your email out, I understand. Just contact me directly. My email is all over my website and I'll make sure you get that PDF without needing to sign up anywhere. If you do sign up, though, you also get access to a resources section called The Studio, where I have videos, white papers and PDFs, discounts from my guests and snippets of audio from my guests that no one else gets to hear. So maybe it's worth your while. Totally up to you. And of course, if you're looking for voiceovers, you can get in touch with me about that, too. Now back to the podcast. Along those lines, when you're looking at people who have implemented this in really outstanding ways, which, you know, I'm assuming that the ISAs are for that kind of recognition. What do you look for in a brand or an implementation or a company that's developed something to give them that kind of an award? Um, Maybe before I answer, we should make clear that um, ISA and we sent are two different companies. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm partner of both of them. Of them. Mm-hmm. So I I was also I was founding the ISA, mm-hmm. and um, later on I became partner and CEO of of WeSound. Okay. So uh, and Lars and I we work for WeSound and we develop brands and we do that. At ISA, mm-hmm. I'm in the nice position now to be a senior partner. So I'm not um, working. Um, Operative anymore? You mm-hmm. say this operative? Mm-hmm. Um, operations. I, I operations, don't yes. Day to day stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but but yes, but but I'm but I'm still uh, of course responsible for the for the concept behind that. Mm-hmm. So and now to to the answer of your question, you ask um, what are the criteria? Mm-hmm. So we were thinking about okay, what's what's out there on the market f- uh, uh, in terms of awards? Yeah? Mm-hmm. So we realized actually there's not there's not not quite a lot of awards for for sound design for sound, yeah? and the awards you have there they're more on um, sound design for um, films and commercials. Yeah? Mm-hmm. They but don't seem to be s- about innovation. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So and this was for example one of our uh, very important uh, criteria. So um, before that, we had the audio branding awards. So we were only focusing on branding, on brand mm-hmm. sound. Yeah. But after a couple of of, of years, we we thought it might be uh, we, we had so many nice um, entries we could not accept because they were really great cases, but they are not um, uh, relating on on a brand. Yeah? Ah, yes. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Just the case you mentioned before. Yeah? Yeah. It's not a branding case, yeah? but it's yeah. a fantastic case. Mm -hmm. so, you said, so, we, so we thought, okay, now sound is so much more and it's not only about brands. So uh, we thought uh, the main idea is to make the world sound better. Yeah? So every th the award is for things, for projects that help to make the world sound better in a broader sense. So how to do that? To do something that is, really makes sense. So the sound you create the solutions could also maybe a research, a white paper or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. You have to do something. You have to do a project that really helps to make the world sound better in an innovative way and in a smart way. So smart, innovative and useful. That sensible. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> These are the three main criteria. I think they're quite universal. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and looking through the winners, I can definitely see that applied. <laughs> yeah. It's it's really a, a cool yeah. way of doing things. And I love and if, that it makes sound, it makes the world sound better. I, I like. Uh, I love that idea. Yes. <laughs> yeah. For example, you have last year, we had so many social projects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. with, um, yes. And I was always so touched there. And, and this year, again, we had this uh, project for... Um, it's called um, Familienhörbuch. It's um, a project for uh, young um, parents okay. and they're going to die and they know because most of them have cancer. Mm -hmm. And this is all very fast and they have not much time and they want to tell their children a story about their life and um, to give them something for the time after that when they mm -hmm. are alone. <laughs> you see, and even now I'm so touched. I I, I can't really talk about this, yeah, it's but it's so beautiful. touching. It, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I remember when I'm last year also when I was sitting in the audience because now I, I I'm in the in the nice position I can sit um, in the audience and don't have to be on stage or behind stage. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was really almost crying. It was so touching and so nice projects, thinking about this and really helping these people to. Um, to um, yes, to to make their world, their own little world, mm -hmm. sound better. And for children, it's so important um, to to hear the voice of your parents, of your mother, of your father. Mm -hmm. And that's it's really touching. Yeah, it sounds beautiful. <laughs> it's good that this is a podcast and not a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I can't see the tears. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. all good. Uh, yeah, it's amazing how powerful sound can be for a whole host of different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I love that you are actually giving these people the distinction of an award to let them know that their efforts are appreciated. I think that's a wonderful yeah. thing. So thank it's, you. <laughs> it's, thank you. And it's so many cases and such an amount of cases on the mm -hmm. website now because you're running this since... 10 years, now it's the 11th year, mm -hmm. and it's really a lot. And yeah. you see the development. If you watch the audio branding cases from 2009 mm -hmm. or 2010, and you compare it with the cases now, this year or last year, you know what I mean by we help to develop to this industries, mm -hmm. to make it professional. Yeah? Sure. What have you seen yeah. change? Specifically, does it just go from it was only branding at one point to it's now the broader spectrum of our lives? Both. And it's I think it's mm -hmm. exactly what Lars uh, said, What uh, also what is um, the challenge on the, the requirements of the future. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not like, oh, in the former times you had, okay, we have a logo, we have a piece of music. And, we, and if, if you have more than one piece of music, you maybe have... 20 versions of this particular piece of music in country, pop, techno, whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. yep. And you get so bored after a while and you can't hear it anymore. Eh? Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, we have a corporate anthem and we have this anthem for the Asian market and we have the anthem for the, um, for the uh, American market and one for the French market. And guess what, how they sound like? And you just deliver all these sonic stereotypes of these mm -hmm. countries. Yeah. And, Oh no, it's it's really boring. Huh? And well, at that time maybe it was cool, it was fancy. And I thought, oh wow, that's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But pretty soon I realized, oh no, okay, now everybody's doing this, and now it really gets boring. And now we have much more agile, um, liquid concepts, and they're much more flexible, and you have much more different um, mm -hmm. 
kinds of applications and each application has its own rules how to implement sound and work and it works completely different so never please never have a car brand and create a sound logo for this car and then have the great idea to play the sound logo every time you start the the car the engine or you <laughs> enter the car yeah? imagine you had would have something like the sound logo and every time you enter the car you would have to hear the, exactly the same version as mm -hmm. you can hear on the commercials yeah the idea might be nice for the first two days but mm -hmm. then really really gets annoying so what you need is a reference to what you experience in the communications or the better way would be to have in the communications something that reminds you of the product experience because it's all about brand experience so i want something in the communication in the communications that i say oh yes it's true this is something i know that it's familiar and because it's familiar i love it This so are how, you evoking an emotion then, as opposed to an actual physical sound? Yeah. In the in the car, it should yeah. be an emotion. Well, yeah, an emotion. Yeah. Okay, yeah, what, that makes what, sense. What should be the emotion in your car when you want to start driving? How should that sound like? I guess it's what, different for every car, but, I, you know, um, quality, pride. Um, I, yeah, I'm not really sure what... Yeah. Uh, fun? safety, <laughs> fun. If yeah. You, if you, if you have <laughs> aggression. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it depends yeah. on the yeah. car brand, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And the exactly. city you live in. Yeah. yeah and no, the city. Let's... Exactly. Yeah. 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 So there's lots that yeah. goes into that. But we had German brands who had the claim Fahrvergnügen, which means joy of driving. Yes. Mm -hmm. This could be a hint. Yeah. And with the technologies today, you even have the chance because you have such, you have so smart cars at the now yeah? mm -hmm. so the car knows exactly where i am who's driving yeah mm -hmm. and um is it the son the daughter or the mother the father yeah the car couldn't they could know it mm -hmm. and they know the time and the weather and lots of information yeah, yeah it's a and lot they, yeah. <laughs> yes. and today we we have the possibilities and the technologies that the sound design the brand sound design of that car, of that mm -hmm. product, could be responsive, which means it's interacting, it's responding to your personal situation. Mm -hmm. And now it gets interesting. And that's a big difference from the past to the future, because now it gets yeah. your brand. It's my version of my car. And I love this car. And I will always drive this car because I have this strong relationship now. Yeah. And it's amazing how strong the relationship can be with a sound coupled with the sight. Mm. Yeah. It just yeah. becomes this mesh of emotion that really hits us deep. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what I yeah. love about audio branding in general. It it hits us right in our hearts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Ideally, yeah. yeah. But it never stands Ideally, alone. yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we always have this contact with the visual mm. and other multi central experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the more senses you're using, the more deeply it can affect you. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I'm going to be very respectful of your time because I know we've been here a while. <laughs> uh, but how can people find out more about you guys um, and the Audio Branding Academy? Well, I would say you just go on, for We Sound, you go on www. You go on wesound.de. Okay. Okay. We sound thing. So you just Google it and then you find everything about Lars and about me. Okay. But even more important, you find everything about our team because this is what we in the We Sound stands for. It's a team. And yeah. And if you want to learn something about the, the ISA, mm -hmm. ESA, the Isabel. <laughs> the Isabel. Um, okay, yeah. I'm uh, going to remember yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah. Then you just type in um, international minus dot, uh, minus um, sound minus awards dot com. Mm -hmm. But actually, who is typing um, internet or URLs anymore? Yeah? You would just Google Just Google or it. You yeah. yeah, International Sound Awards. <laughs> yeah. Or you Google Lars Ohlendorf. 
Because I yeah. know that the Audio Branding Society is the URL, right? Audio-branding-society.org, I think, something like that. This one, this is uh, um, the domain of the society, indeed. But that's a different, uh, actually, even a different um, uh, website. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was wondering. That's <laughs> yeah, that's why I was wondering yes. about you know the Audio <laughs> yeah. Branding Academy, the Audio Branding Society. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, it's true. Yeah. yeah. The Academy is uh, the organi organization who is running this. and um, mm -hmm. yeah. But I would say um, the interesting stuff you find on the International Sound Awards. Okay. Where you find all the cases. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a blog, actually, um, which will become a podcast on a couple of those winners because they're fascinating. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes, you should. Uh, yeah. They all deserve it. And if you, if you need a... Um, an audio branding agency, you can go on the society website and there mm -hmm. you find a little database and you see on which country, see, mm -hmm. ah, okay, here, and you can choose your partner. That's great. Well, thank you so much for talking with me today, guys. This was fantastic and I learned a ton. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Joe. Yeah, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Yeah, I love the work that you do. So keep on doing <laughs> it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available on all the usual outlets. Until next time.